Hello everyone, and welcome to a brand new Angels of North America video. Today, we'll be talking about the locomotive that started the Jeep series. No, not that kind of Jeep. Today, we're talking about the EMD GP7. The GP7 has its roots in the uniquely shaped but unsuccessful seller of a locomotive, the BL2. The odd shape of the BL2 would be replaced with a narrower, boxier hood. The units would become not only known for their lightweight design, but they would also become known for their excellent pulling power. While rare, some units would be sold in low nose variants. The GP7 would be built from October 1949 through May 1954. The GP in GP7 means general purpose, and the 7 doesn't actually denote anything specific. It was chosen since both the E7 and F7 were both in production at the same time. Each GP7 came equipped with a 567B 16-cylinder engine and ran on a B-B wheel arrangement. The units had a top speed of 65 miles per hour, had a tractive effort of up to 65,000 pounds, weighed in at 246,000 pounds, measured in at 55 feet 11 inches, and each unit came equipped with a Wabco E2, according to railroadforum.net. A grand total of 76 North American Class 1 railroads and even some Class 2s ran the GP7. These include, but are not limited to, the Clinchfield, Florida East Coast, Union Pacific, and the Maine Central. The railroad with the most GP7s was the Santa Fe with a grand total of 250 units. The Chesapeake and Ohio came in second with 185 units, and the New York Central came in third with 169 units. The GP7 entered service in 1949 and was retired in the 1980s. One thing that's interesting is that the GP7 will be used in both freight and passenger service. EMD sold well over 2,700 GP7s during its production run, but this was only the beginning of the general purpose series of diesel electrics. The GP7 would be succeeded by the GP9 starting in 1954. As previously stated, the railroads kept their GP7 units running well into the 1980s. A fair amount of GP7s have been preserved throughout North America. These include, but are not limited to, Sioux Line 559 at the Minnesota Transportation Museum, Louisville and Nashville 405 at the Tennessee Central Railway Museum, and Western Pacific 705 at the Western Pacific Railroad Museum in Portola, California.